Batteries are one of the most used things in modern life, powering everything from our smartphones to electric vehicles. But have you ever wondered how they work? To understand how batteries work, let's delve into the basic principles behind their operation. Batteries are used to power the loads like lamps, resistors, or other electronic devices. The main work of the battery is to push the electron from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal, completing the circuit. The amount of work the battery does to push electrons is the total energy stored in the battery. The amount of energy to push the electron in the battery is achieved by the chemical reaction inside the battery. But how does the chemical reaction provide energy? To learn about it, first, let's look at what is inside the battery. The outermost layer is a plastic wrapper with useful data about the battery-like voltage, capacity, and which end is positive or negative. The positive end of the battery is known as the cathode which has an extended surface. The negative end is known as anode. These two terminals are electrically isolated. Under the wrapper, we find a steel casing, this casing holds all the internal components in place and protects the internal chemicals from the elements present in the atmosphere. Within the casing, we have the layer of the cathode which consists a layer of manganese oxide and graphite. Graphite is used because it increases the conductivity and the energy density. Now under the cathode layer, there is a fibrous barrier that prevents direct contact between the cathode and anode, which helps the battery last longer when not in use. The barrier has microscopic holes that allow the ion's atoms to pass through it. An alkaline electrolyte of potassium hydroxide is sprayed onto the barrier which is absorbed by the cathode material. Then inside the barrier is the anode material which is made up of zinc powder and some type of gelling agent. The gelling agent is used to keep zinc suspended so it doesn't accumulate in one spot. The zinc is used in powder form to increase the surface area, which reduces the internal resistance thus improving the electron flow. The steel casing is then sealed with a nylon plastic cap. A brass bin is inserted with a steel cap which gives us the negative terminal. As we said already, the positive and the negative terminals are separated with a plastic insulator otherwise the battery will short circuit. Now let's see how the battery produces the energy. Every material in the battery is made up of different atoms. These atoms are represented by different colors and each color represents a different material therefore a different atom. The different atoms inside the battery start to interact with each other. First of all, a hydroxide ion atom from the electrolyte combines with a zinc atom forming zinc hydroxide and water atom. This chemical reaction is known as oxidation and the reaction releases free electrons which will be stored in the brass pin. At the same time, an atom of manganese oxide, water, and a free electron combine to form a slightly different version of manganese oxide. This version no longer needs a hydroxide atom so it ejects the hydroxide atom and this type of reaction is known as reduction. The water atom is replaced by the one ejected from the oxidation reaction. Now we have a collection of free electrons on the negative terminal. As we know, similar charges repel so, electrons stored in the brass pin want to separate and go to the place with fewer electrons. The place with the lesser electrons is the positive terminal, and the place with the higher electron is the negative terminal. However, the positive and negative terminals are separated by the insulator so they are trying to find an external route to the positive terminal. When we provide an external path like a wire then the electron will flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And if we place some type of load like a lamp in the external route, they will do the work for us like illuminating the lamp. Now here's one question, where does the electron go? that travel to the positive terminal if they cannot go to the negative terminal because of the insulator? The answer is simple, do you remember when we said that we need a free electron in the reduction reaction for the reaction to happen? The electrons sent travel to the positive end are used as free electrons in the reduction reaction. After using the battery, it will become harder and harder for an electron to flow. Eventually, the material inside the battery will be depleted and the chemical reactions will stop. At this point, the battery will be of no further use and must be properly disposed of. And this is how an alkaline battery works. If you learned something useful then make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video.